Is it a secret you can't tell in front of Kobot and Narumi? Yeah. <gasps> Girl! I hope it has to do with your underwear. It's not even... <laughs> Hello, M welcome to a Marketing Beat. Uh, I am Amit, and I own a pay-per-click advertising company, and this is Beverly. Hi, I'm Beverly Teresa. I own my own social media consultancy <laughs> business. We specialize in PPC. Just kidding. <laughs> Fucking don't know what to say. I hate okay. the openers. Bah. Okay, what are we talking about today? Blog planning. Okay, what about it? Why do you oh. do it? Like, what's the whole, what's the start so, to finish process? I want to talk about blog content planning because, first of all, I don't like blogging that much. Um, I think a lot of people hate blogging, so planning actually makes it easier and more likable. Um, first, like, consider like, okay, why do I even want to blog in the first place? Uh, is it just to help you with um, ranking? Is it to offer your audiences insight into your fashionable world or something? Like if you're a fashion blogger, fashion influencer. <laughs> Can you give <laughs> us fashion like that? I know, that's because it's like fashion guru, fashion. <laughs> and like, who are you writing for? So if I... I'm a social media marketing person. Hmm, I should be one. Um, like, am I writing for small businesses? Am I writing for in-house marketers? Who is my ideal audience? Who do I want to read my blogs? And what's the point of having a blog? So those are the first two things you want to figure out. Obviously, like, it seems really like, oh, well, duh, Beverly. But there's actually, like, some questions to consider, like, how many readers do you actually want to attract? What days of the week would you want to post your blog? How much time do you have to post your blog in general? What categories of content are you going to be posting about? And then for your target audience, what are like, I don't know, like the top five of their top five of their interests? And that will help um, build out the categories that you have on your blog post. And we'll talk about categories and tags later on. Uh, the second part, after you figure all that shit out, is choosing your favorite type of content. And by favorite type of content, I mean it can be the type of content you enjoy producing. So there's audio, video, and then written content. So some pros to audio is that it's really easy to record. It's perfect for audiences who are busy, so maybe you want to do a podcast or read out your entire blog post and they can just listen to it on the way to work and jam out to your voice. Sounds like a 15 year old girl. Oh wait, that's me. <laughs> Some cons of it are, it's not visual. So if people are visual learners, they're not going to be able to get that from it. Um, there's not really a, like a way to attract audiences who prefer videos and visuals so again like the downfall to audio is that if people like watching things they're not going to be able to video is more obviously more uh what's the word engaging more engaging but also like harder to put together and it can be overwhelming for some people just because it's like well now i have to edit it and now i have to export it, and it's going to take 10 hours to export it into an mp4 like when i export the marketing beat episodes um you need your ideal audience to sit back and like have free time so if you know that they're not busy maybe video something for them it's a great tool for trust building within your audience it's easier to close with a call to action and it's more entertaining and eye-catching and the more I read this chart I'm like those aren't cons are they I put it wrong in my so I'm reading off like this workbook I created and I'm like wait a second <laughs> I'm dumb <laughs> okay and then written content which everyone knows about um, it's editable it's ideal for SEO purposes it's perfect for the audience people who like to read 
But again, thinking about people's attention span, I think it's eight seconds now, so less than a goldfish. So having skimmable, readable content is important. Um, highlighting words, making them bold to stand out. So if someone's skimming your article, they're able to just pick out the important keys. Um, it's not really great for a busy audience, and it requires the person to sit down and read and actually give you their full attention. Um, that's why, like, okay, so John Loomer will write a blog post, but then he'll also, um, I don't know what she does first, but he, he does an audio to each blog post. So you can sit there and listen to him, or you can read it yourself, which is, like, kind of a genius idea, and we'll talk about repurposing content later on. So how do we create blog content? How do I know what to post? Um, brainstorm. So me and Amit for this channel, for this um, series, we actually just had like a spreadsheet and we just did a brain dump. That's what I would recommend. Um, if you were like, okay, well, I tried that, but like it sucked. Um, try and do a mind map. Mind maps are like my favorite. Do I have my notebook here? No, I don't. But mind maps are pretty much like the central theme. So it's, maybe it's social media. And then, okay, what's underneath social media is the central theme. So there's like Facebook, there's content, there's, um, and then under content, there's video, there's blah, blah, blah. So under each category, there's different topics that you can be writing about. So just keep branching and make like a huge mind map. And then those are your topics that you can blog about. Um, I find mind mapping really relaxing, especially if you do it on a piece of paper. And I find, like, if you don't edit yourself during the mind mapping process, you actually come up with some really great shit. So don't feel like anything is wrong or don't erase anything. Don't go back and erase things. Just, like, map out your mind as it comes along. Yes? Do you use mind maps, me? I do more brain dumps if anything i just write down random things that come to my mind and then i go off and maybe that is mind mapping in a sense i just go off and think of other things but really right now for content creation i just look at what everybody else is kind of writing and i go off of that so I, if it's a topic that i think would be interesting and i could put my own little spin on it then i would write about it if not then we just kind of leave it alone that is kind of like it's like mind mapping off other people's mind maps. Ooh. Basically. Because I figured I everyone's already done the hard work. Why should I? It's true, though. I mean, everyone blogs about the same shit. Like, I could blog about Facebook ads, and then someone else has, like, millions of other people have blogs about Facebook ads. But it's really about the spin that you put on your own content and, like, the personality and the way you explain things. Um because it's like, well, I can just go read John Loomer's Facebook ads thing, or I could read Beverly's, and Beverly's will have swears in it and give me a different point of view to it. So I don't know. That's why I like, I like blogging. I just don't like the process of blogging. <laughs> it's just too much work. Yeah. And then let's talk about categories and tags. So this is just a way of organizing your content on your website. And... For WordPress, this stuff is really important because if you want to have categories where people can look for certain things or just look at certain topics, um, you'll want to make sure that you implement tags and categories. The difference between the two is categories would be, let's say I had a food blog, would be breakfast, lunch, and dinner would be the three categories. And then underneath that, I would have tags. So for each blog post, it's like, Maybe I had a recipe on making scrambled eggs. I don't know if that actually requires a recipe. Um, but so then your tags for that, it would go under the category breakfast, and then the tags would be like eggs, milk, or something like that. So then if someone's like, oh, all I have at home are eggs and milk, I wonder what Beverly's food blog says that I can make for, for food today. And then they'll look under the tag eggs, and then they can see everything that requires eggs. Yeah, that makes that sense. Makes, yeah. But then is there any, I don't know if you know the answer to this, but is there any SEO value to that then? Mm, I don't know. Because really, some people don't even display their tags. Mm -hmm. They'll just display their 
categories and people can click through the categories and then <laughs> and then um what's up huh? nothing and then oh and then after the blog post at the very bottom there'll be like tags egg salad and pasta i don't know if there's actual seo value um but i mean if you're writing egg recipe in your blog post anyway there's your seo does that make sense okay and then one of the most important things is probably your headline or title because that's what's going to be the clickbait so you won't believe these 10,000 facebook tactics that work to make me millions of dollars something like that would be clickbaity but maybe it's like my top seven Facebook ad hacks or something, and then someone would read it. So for catchy titles, there's I have a list of titles that usually work, or headlines, should I say. Ooh. Um, somewhere. Okay, I did this. Okay, so when people are like five ways, seven uses, ten strategies, like having a number to it, and then also including how to or why, and then most importantly, the end result, what your reader will get out of reading it. So five ways to use your blog content and make more money, or five ways to use Facebook ads to gain more leads or something. I don't know. Okay, yeah. Okay. I, yeah. That makes and, like, I, I really like creating listicle, so when you have, like, a bunch of stuff we just call it listicle blog posts because it's super easy it doesn't require a lot of writing um, I was just like including a fun image with it and I like reading stuff in a listicle as well just because it's easy for me to skim through and look at what I want to learn about and also you get to know how much content's already going to be in there yeah that's the other yeah and that's also like why BuzzFeed is really popular still because they're just like, okay, here's the list of the 10 cutest pandas in the world or something. And you're just like, okay, now I know what to expect and how many pandas I'm going to see. Yeah, exactly. So they say that a typical blog post should be 800 to 1,200 words. 1,200 words is a lot. And <laughs> when I blog, I don't even – maybe this isn't the best tactic – Obviously, don't follow in my footsteps, but I don't even do word count. Do you, when you guys blog, do you count, make sure you have X amount of characters or words? Not really. At one point in our guide, like in my writing guidelines, I had put that we would want about 800 words. Um, but since then, I've kind of let it go because really, I don't know. There was one blog post that I had someone else write, and he wrote it in 875, I think. And then when I went in, I ended up expanding it to like 16, I think. So I thought it like, so oh my God. That point, it's just one of those things where like, it only makes, if you put a word count on something, you're basically shooting yourself in the foot. Cause sometimes some topics can't actually be written about in more than 500 words. And then there's some topics that can't be written about in less than a thousand. Really, yeah. you really want to explain it well. So you really just have to choose. It's really based off of the topic. You really shouldn't be doing the word counts at all, I don't think. Because sometimes yeah. you'll go under, sometimes you'll go over. And if you're trying to hit a certain number, you're probably going to end up seeing yourself kind of get fucked. Yeah, it's like in high school when your teacher's like, it's a 2,000-word essay. And then you're just like, I'll use a lot of filler words. That's and exactly it. Yeah. So I like the idea of not using word count. And, like, I don't, like, blogging for me, because I, I like it sometimes, but I don't want to add the extra pressure of being like, oh, I have to blog 875 words today. Um, What's I would rather just write. Especially if you're being, if, especially if you're a writer and you're getting paid for it, to write yeah. someone else, then it's a very stressful thing, because then you have to sit there and go, okay, well, how else do I expand on it? And then that's when the fillers come in. Yeah. It's the same thing on my end where I'm like sitting there. I'm like, why would I make myself do 875 words if this content doesn't need 875 words? Exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah. So don't limit yourself. So maybe do follow in our footsteps. Mm-hmm. Hi, yeah. Lily. Lily is my YYZ BFF. Oh. She calls me Beaverly. I call you Sorry, Beaver me. all the time. Don't get jealous. I am very jealous, actually. What the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, my God. Okay. And then we're going to talk about adding a call to action because I failed so hard at this part when I first started blogging because I'm like, okay, bye. Like, that's the end of my blog. Bye. Um, so now I'm like, I'm going to go through and add calls to action under each of my blog posts just because there's no point in blogging unless you want to, like, send them somewhere else. Um, it's nice when you push traffic to your website using a blog post, but then you also want to control where they go after they're done reading it. So being like, um, you can suggest our other blog posts to, for them to read that are related. You can put a link to your contact page. You can ask a question and say comment below. So it all depends on what you want the call to action to be, but make sure you include one at the end. And even with like my YouTube videos and stuff too, like I'm like, oh fuck, I'm not even including a call to action on, at the end of my YouTube videos. I'm just like, oh, hit the subscribe button and like not saying anything else. So yeah, calls to action, tell people what you want and make them do it. I don't think it's that easy, but I wish it was. Well, it's basically like a salesperson knocking on doors and then doing nothing after they knocked on a door. Yeah. And then just looking at their face and then, like, walking away. That would be me if I was a salesperson. I'd be like, okay, see you later. Bye. And just walk away really awkwardly. Yeah, you basically just go and tell them about the product or the service, and then you literally just leave. That's it. Okay, bye. Touch off for now. Call me later. (laughs) Let me know that you want to buy this. I know you do, but I didn't tell you to buy it, nor did I ask you. I have a form in my car, but I'm not walking back to get it. (laughs) (laughs) Come to me. (laughs) Hey, I mean, none of your fanboys are on this live. Fucking God, man. Well, Matt's here, I think, so. He's my lover, though. Um, He's not a fanboy. Oh, that's awkward. Um, All right, get a room, you two. So, repurposing content is kind of like the last step after publishing it. Uh, I saw a thing on LinkedIn yesterday that Gary Vaynerchuk shared. Um, I actually follow him on LinkedIn. I don't know why, because sometimes I just get so annoyed. And it's like, obviously, he has a huge team behind him that can do all this shit. But he starts with, at the top of his content triangle, he starts with one piece of really big pillar content. So that can be like a big, long blog post. That can be a podcast. That can be a video. And then he splits it. So it's like, how can I make this one big piece of pillar content into bite-sized things so I can market the content but also market myself and make the best use of the time that his staff probably did um, making this pillar content. So he'll um, like make memes or like just basically like quote images with the content. He will do um, like really quick snippets of voice over um, an image or something like that. He'll do one minute edits for social media. He'll talk about it on Snapchat. He'll give more tips in addition to the blog post or the pillar content. And it's just about like how you repurpose your content. So I was saying like John Loomer's blog post, he'll have the written out content, but then also you can listen to it. And then maybe, I don't know if he's done this before because I haven't looked at his blog in a while, but then instead of just doing the voice in addition to that, maybe he does a video while he's talking about it and then he rips the audio and there's the audio. Um, You just want to make sure, basically, the point of repurposing is to make sure that you're getting the most out of your content because you spent, like, hours or whatever writing a 1,600-word blog post, and you want to make sure that those hours were put to good use. So instead of just being like, okay, published, and I shared it once on social, make sure you're doing other things with it as well. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah. 
And use a calendar planner. I think I skipped this, but um, yeah, just make sure that you're posting consistently. Consistently doesn't mean like, oh, I'm going to publish four times a week every week or whatever. Um, it can be like, I'm going to post two times a month. And it's like, okay, you post two times a month, but then next month, make sure you actually stick to the two times. Um, so it's all about being consistent. I'm horrible at it. Um, so don't follow in my footsteps. But, I mean, if you're going to say, I'm going to blog once a week on Tuesdays and blog once a week on Tuesdays, and we all know that I suck at following anything like that because my Instagram, um, yeah, social media Mondays fail. We are not talking about that. Okay. Well, we're almost done anyway. Do you want to close this out? Yeah, unless anybody has any questions. Oh, right. I forgot about everyone else. God damn. I wonder. God damn, god damn, little Zan is a man. Do you know that song, Lil Zan? I don't know. He's like face tattoos. I know who he is. He's a child. He's like 12. And he got some girl pregnant or something like that, but then turned out it was a fake or something. What is exposed yag? Do they spill the tea? Let's go on to the social account to find out one day. Okay, I'll go on after. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's basically what I have. If you have any questions, you can slide into my DMs. Um, or you can message me or go on my website and read my blog. Mm -hmm. And meet. tell us about your PPC glossary again. It's 25 beautiful words. Uh, or not 25 beautiful words, 25 beautiful pages with 162 keywords, the largest on the internet that I could find. Uh, took us a long time to do. Very proud of it. You can download it on our website. What's That's your website? Ameetcabra.com. It's A-M-E-E-T-K-H-A-B-R-A.com. Or a link in her bio. Or a link in my bio. <laughs> I'm helping you. You are. I suck at this. <laughs> um, next week, I'm going to be in Calgary, hashtag YYC, for Social West. I am presenting on Thursday at 11. See, I remember these things at least. I better double check. Um, Thursday at 11 a.m. on Funnels. And the first slide has a funnel cake, and then there's actually a slide of a guy holding a funnel. So, yeah, we can talk about sales funnels. So it'll be really cool. It'll be huge. So I'm going to have to find my business cards or something because, yeah. Yeah, you should probably do that. I had those little moo cards made, but then I lost the box because I cleaned. Well, I didn't clean. My friend cleaned my house for me. <laughs> Let's move somewhere. Okay, anyways, um, we're going to be back here live on Wednesday at 11 a.m., and we're going to be talking about how to troll your competitors online. It's going to be like the best topic ever. I'll actually promote it on my Twitter for once. Yeah, um, it's finally something that you enjoy. <laughs> we'll learn from a meet how to use paid strategies to, or paid tactics to troll your competitors online, which is going to be amazing. I'm going to take notes. Perfect. So that'll be fun. I'm very excited. And then new videos to our YouTube page, our, our channel, are uploaded every Tuesday. I've actually been okay at it um, recently, so yeah. It's so go check safe, those out. This one. And subscribe to our channel. But, okay, that's all I have to say. Don't talk anymore, Meet. See you in Google. Bye. Bye. Bye.